Hi, accounting students. Today we are going to do some guided practice for debit and credit theory. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of, uh, well, about five or six transactions um, that uh, we need to process. Not a lot different than uh, what we've done before. It's just going to be a little bit more organized. So looking, um, sort of situating ourselves first of all with our form here. So here um, is our list of accounts. So we have a cash account. We have one accounts receivable for C. Martins. We have a supplies account, an automobile account, an accounts payable for M. Ivy, and then our capital account. So what we're going to do then is we're going to look at each of our transactions, and then we're going to we got seven all together to do. I'm going to do three with you, and then the other or sorry the first four together we're going to do online here and then I'm going to leave the other three for you to sort out as your sort of homework. Um, so looking at this here we have the transaction number in this column we're not going to have to do anything with that. Um, then we have what kind of account it is we have to decide is it an asset liability or is equity because understanding that is part of knowing whether we need to do a debit or a credit. We're going to think about what account is affected uh, what, um, whether it's a debit or credit, and then the amount that we're going to be doing. So thinking about all these things at once can be a little bit overwhelming. Typically, I like to start with the account and the amount. Usually that's pretty straightforward. So whether it's a cash account or account receivable, whatever, and then the amount from there, then we can do the analysis. So thinking about if it's the cash account, that it's an asset account, and if it's an increase or a decrease, um, then we can decide if it's a debit or a credit. So let's have a look at the first transaction and see what we come up with. So in this transaction, the owner of the business, Jay Carr, invests uh, $10,000 cash and an automobile worth $42,000. So remembering a couple things. One is, is that you will always have some debit and some credit. In fact, you will always have equal amounts of debit and credit. But that doesn't mean that you will only have one entry each for debit and credit. And so right away, and this is kind of a little bit of cheater, is you can see here that we've got three lines in this first transaction. So that should be a pretty big clue that we're going to be using three different accounts. The trick is after that is knowing that um, the debits and credits balance. So let's just look in, and, and this is kind of a skill that you're going to develop with practice. We're going to look at our transaction, and we're going to look for some keywords um, and the amounts. So first of all, this idea about the owner, J. Carr investing, right? So there's some keywords. That's a key thing that's happening. We also have an automobile and um, cash. So here we've got sort of three words that are three sets of words here. I'll even highlight them in red um, just so we can kind of figure out what's going on here. Okay. And the automobile. So right away we should recognize probably easily that we are going to need our cash account and we're going to need our automobile account. And Sometimes they don't exactly match up, so you want to always double check with what we have available. Sure enough, we have a cash account and we have an automobile account. So we can go ahead, and the order doesn't really matter. Um, at this point, we're just going to worry about getting things done, automobile. And then the last thing is, the last account is their idea is this word, uh, or set of words rather, this phrase, owner of the business, J. Carr Invest. Anytime you see words like that, we should be thinking owner's equity. Um, and investment means that the owner is putting money into the business. And so here we have J. Carr Capital. So then our last account that we're going to need is J. Carr Capital. So as I said, the next step that's easiest um, for me is to put in the amounts and make sure that I have uh, kind of the right amounts. So I have $10,000 worth of cash and $42,000 worth of automobile. So over here, I'm going to put in my 10,000, one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, 42,000. So and I'm, going to just, I'm going to just kind of format these right now so that whoop, we have um, a good amount, or sorry, a good formatting here. So let's just put in our comments. There we go. All right. 
So now the problem is, is that we have JCAR Capital and we don't really know um, what that number is. So going back down here, and this is kind of the key word here, and. So that's kind of like an adding um, function in math. So we have $10,000 in cash and $42,000 worth of car. That means the total investment of JCAR is going to be the two of them put together. So $52,000. There we go. Now from there, we can decide are these assets, liabilities, or owner's equity? And hopefully, because you're quick, you're gonna recognize right away that um, we have an asset in cash, we have an automobile, which is an asset, and then we have um, uh, an OE account, which is our capital account. If you wanna write it out in full, if you wanna say asset, asset, and owner's equity, you can. Sometimes just the code is easier. Now, remembering back to our T account rules. So here, in, uh, in terms of our cash, we have more than we used to. In terms of our car, the business, we, the business, have more car than we used to. And uh, in terms of our capital, the owners put money and car into the business. So again, we have more, all right? Now, from there, it might look like, well, we're not going to be really balanced. We've got more of everything. Don't we need like some subtractions? Well, no, we don't. What we need to make sure is that we have equal amounts of debit and credit. And so let's go over here now and think about our debit and credit um, pieces. So remembering from our T account rules, increases for assets go on the left or debit side. Okay. So that means in this column, we're going to indicate that this is a debit and we have more car, which is going to go on the left side or debit side of the T account. So that is going to be um, a debit as well. Now on the capital account, remember now we're into opposite world where everything is around the other side of the accounting equation. Um, increases to the capital account go on the right or credit side of the um, uh, of the T account or of the, yeah, of the T account. And so now before I want to mo move on, I want to make sure that I have equal amounts of debit to credit before I move on to my next transaction. So if I add up my 42,000 and my 10,000, that equals 52,000, which is the amount of the single entry to capital. So right there, I can see that I'm balanced. And as long as I'm reasonably comfortable that I've identified the right accounts, we can move on. So in the second transaction now, um, we've been provided, uh, we have provided an accounting service on credit. So this is a really, really important um, thing to understand here. In accounting, credit often has two meanings. The first, well, one is that we talk about in terms of debits and credits, left side versus right side of the T account but it also means money that's um, being kind of lent or um, the value of service that ha is going to be paid for in the future. And so we have to make sure that we don't confuse the two terms. So in this case, what this means to um, for us is that the service was sold on, on credit. That means we are going to be paid in the future, which we should know is an account receivable. And so the amount of this activity is $580. Now, it doesn't really say, so we figured out there's account receivable, but it doesn't really say what else um, we need to debit or credit. Well, it's, in, it's implied in this phrase right here. And so for now, and I think we talked about this before, whenever we see this, this idea of providing a service, that is basically adding to the value of the business. And where do we keep track of the value of the business? That is in the owner's equity account. So in this case, we're going to need an entry for accounts receivable for C. Martins. So I'm really hoping that up above in my list of accounts, there's one there, or I might need to create it. And then my capital account. So let's go back up here. So again, we have, and sure enough, we have an accounts receivable for C. Martins. So I'm going to type that in, C. Martins, and then uh, we have our account payable, or sorry, our capital account. Okay, and the amount of the service was $580 on both sides, on both parts. 
right? They, we sold them the service worth 580. They didn't pay any money towards it. We're going to collect the full amount in the future. So here, then, just kind of doing a little side work again, thinking about this logically. Um, our accounts receivable for C. Martins, maybe they owed us $0 before. Now they owe us $580. So that amount has increased. Since we've provided a service to our customer, which is always a good thing for our business, we have more value in the business than we did before. So that is also an increase. So the next step then is to think about the type of account. Well, we have an asset account for our account receivable, and we have an OE account for um, the capital. So then the last thing we need to do is to figure out our debits and credits. Well, once again, thinking about our T accounts, um, the uh, increases to assets go on the left or debit side, increases to capital go on the right or credit side. Last thing I want to check before I move on is that I have equal amounts of debit and credit, which I do. So as long as I've identified the correct accounts, I should be good to move forward. So there is a second transaction. All right, so moving on to the um, next transaction. Number three, we purchased but did not pay for $800 worth of supplies from MIB. Okay, so a few keywords here, supplies. So I'm hoping when I go back up to the top, I'm going to find some kind of an account for supplies. And then the same thing for MIB. Now, very important to note here that we bought but did not pay for. All right. So right away, I should be thinking accounts payable, accounts receivable. Right. This is written. It's a little bit vague, but we purchased from this person, MIV. Um, context is always really important. We purchased but did not pay for. So this is going to be um, this is going to be us paying in the future. So that would make it an account payable. All right. So I'm hoping up above in my account list, I'm going to find I'm going to find an account for accounts payable MIV. If not, I may have to uh, create it. So up here, as we discussed below, I have my supplies account, and then sure enough, I have my account payable for MIV. So same as before, list my account. IV list my amounts, so uh, which was what we'll bring further uh, $800 for both sides. Right? There was no cash involved, no other accounts involved. So, how did we um, fare in terms of increases and decreases? Well, I have more supplies in the office, or we have more supplies in the office than we did before the transaction. And uh, we now, before, supposing we owed MIV zero dollars, well, now that we've bought supplies from them, we now owe them $800. So this is also going to be an increase. Going back to my supplies account, we should know that this is an asset account, accounts payable, this is a liability account. Moving over then to figuring out my debits and credits, I have more supplies. And supplies is an asset, so that means that we're going to have a debit there. And uh, MIV, we now, even though it feels like a bad thing, mathematically, we've gone from zero to 800. We owe them more than we used to, so that is a credit. And so, and that's why the nice thing about debits and credits is it kind of gets you away from thinking about things in terms of pluses and minuses. Um, it just, it, it's kind of more, uh, it is what it is kind of thing. Okay, here's the last one that I'm going to do with you and lead you through, and then I'm going to cut you loose and work on your own for the last three. Um, so, number four, C. Martins paid the full amount from transaction number two um, to the business. So, what's implied when we pay a bill, whether it's in full or in part, what's implied there, there's really only one way to pay, and that's with cash. So, even when they give you a check, if the instruction says that they give you a check, to pay the bill, that still represents cash. So we're going to need our cash account for sure. That's kind of implied. Um, the other thing we're going to need to recognize is that um, it's C. Martins, right? So we know that uh, we should look for an account for them. 
And then it says here from transaction number two. So um, I need some details, which is the amount. So I'm going to go back up to transaction number two. And there is the $580 that I'm going to need for this transaction. So I'm just going to make a little note about that on the side just to remind myself. Okay. Okay. So going back up to the top. So I know you my cash account. And then this is, remembering, this is accounts receivable. This is C. Martin's paying us. So we're receiving this money. It's now in the future and receiving this money. So I've got my cash account, which I need, and then my accounts receivable for C. Martin. Um, the amount we decided was $580. We are receiving that in cash, and we are reducing the amount owing from C. Martin's by $580. Going over here now, okay, so let's think about that. So we have more cash now than we used to. And C. Martins owe, now owes us less than they used to. So it went from $580 to zero or whatever the balance was before. All right, so identifying our accounts, we have an asset account and then accounts receivable is also an asset account. That's okay, don't panic about that. What this means though is that um, uh, well, it doesn't really mean anything except that we still need to make sure that we have equal amounts of debit and credit. So over here, we have more cash than we used to. So cash being an asset account, the increases go on the debit side or left side of the T account. Now, here we have the other asset account, but remember, this is our first example where we have something going down, and it works out well because um, it's on the, uh, the asset side of the balance sheet. Since this is a decrease to an asset account, we're going to list that uh, on the right side or on the credit side of the T account. All right, so there you go. That is um, the rest of the, the last of the guided practice part. So your task now then is going to be to complete these last three transactions um, into the spreadsheet and, um, and then submit it uh, as, uh, as your homework. Um, for grading.